This is Mrs. Palmer Quay with the first video for Module 6. This module starts you on learning the process of stoichiometry, which is the math of chemistry, and we're going to begin our study of stoichiometry with calculating with mole ratios. Remember that we balance chemical equations because of the law of conservation of mass that the atoms, the number of atoms that go into an equation that make up the reactants in a chemical reaction have to equal the number of atoms that come out or the products. The reactants are on the left hand side of the equation, the products are on the right hand side of the equation. Note here that we are talking about atoms, the number of atoms, because the number of molecules may change as you rearrange compounds and go through replacement or, you know, uh, synthesis, formation, decomposition, all those different types of chemical reactions that can occur. Remember also that chemical equations, once they are balanced, show you the relative amounts of the reactants and the products, and they do that through the coefficients. We can think about the coefficients as either molecules, moles, or if we do the conversion from moles into grams, grams of the different substances. So let's look at an example. Ammonia is produced from hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas in this process, and I've given you a balanced chemical equation here. So you see in this balanced chemical equation, we can read that as one molecule of nitrogen gas reacting with, one, with three molecules of hydrogen gas to make two molecules of ammonia. Or we could read it as one mole of nitrogen gas reacting with three moles of hydrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia. Or finally, if we take our moles and convert them into grams using the process that we've been working on in our previous module, we can say that 28.0 grams of nitrogen reacts with 6.01 grams of hydrogen to make 34.1 grams of ammonia. So all three of these statements are true, they're all based on the balanced chemical equation, and which one we use depends upon really what we want to do with that equation. The mole ratio, then, is the relationship in moles between any two substances in a chemical reaction. It can be a reactant and a reactant, a reactant and a product, or a product and a product. So, for example, looking at our ammonia equation again, we can see a, ra a ratio between one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen. Or we have a relationship between one mole of nitrogen and two moles of ammonia. Or we could compare three moles of hydrogen to two moles of ammonia. So it depends upon what particular equation we are trying to, or what calculation we're trying to do with this equation, which mole ratio we use. The mole ratios also can be put in the other order. So we can have three moles of hydrogen compared to one of nitrogen, or two moles of ammonia compared to one mole of nitrogen, or two moles of ammonia compared to three moles of hydrogen. So we could say here that you need to have one mole of nitrogen to react with three moles of hydrogen in this reaction, or that one mole of nitrogen produces two moles of ammonia, or that three moles of hydrogen produces two moles of ammonia. So which one you use really depends on what question you're trying to answer. So how do we use these in calculations? Well, here's an example. The question asks, how many moles of ammonia are produced if 4.20 moles of hydrogen are reacted with an excess of nitrogen? So our question is asking us to calculate moles of ammonia. And we're given the information that we have 4.2 moles of hydrogen and we have an excess of nitrogen. So we have plenty of nitrogen. It has more than enough. We don't have to worry about it. So we start with the information we have. We know we have 4.20 moles of hydrogen. And the problem is set up just like you would do in dimensional analysis, because you're going to multiply this by an equivalency fraction that will allow you to cancel out units. So of course we've got hydrogen here, and this would be as if it was over 1, so we want to say hydrogen. 
and we're looking at a relationship between hydrogen and ammonia because our question is asking us to calculate ammonia and we have hydrogen. So what's the mole relationship between hydrogen and ammonia? Well, three moles of hydrogen produce two moles of ammonia. So I kind of have to squeeze my word mole in here. So of course, our units will cancel out here. And we're going to go through, if we go through and do the multiplication, so you multiply 4.20 times 2 and divide it by 3, we end up with an answer of 2.8 moles of ammonia is produced if you start with 4.20 moles of hydrogen. Another way to do this is through cross multiplication. And if, you're, if you like setting up proportional fractions and solving it that way, it works perfectly fine. To solve it with the cross multiplication, you would start with your, um, you're looking for ammonia, and you're given the amount of hydrogen, and you set that equal to, again, the mole ratio, what's the relationship between ammonia and hydrogen. So in this case, when you're going across an equal sign, you keep the same unit in the numerator and the denominator. And then you've got your 2 and your 3, and you will see if you go through and solve this mathematically that in, in the um, problem setting up like a dimensional analysis, you're going to multiply 4 by 2 and divide by 3. And so in this case, when you cross multiply, you multiply the, the 4 and the 2, and you're going to end up dividing by the 3 because it will go with the x. So either one of these mathematical techniques will get you the same answer, that 2.8 and I should put a zero actually after here, 2.80 moles of ammonia are produced. Here's another one. This problem says ammonia will react with nitrogen monoxide to produce nitrogen gas and water vapor. So we've got our skeleton equation here, but it's not balanced because you can see that we have three hydrogens on this side and we only have two hydrogens on this side. So we need to balance this equation. This one's a little bit trickier because you have nitrogen in two different substances. It's here in the ammonia and it's here in the nitrogen oxide, or the nitrogen monoxide, sorry. Um, so just trust me, it might have taken you a couple steps to do this. Our problem would be balanced if we have four moles of ammonia reacting with six moles of nitrogen monoxide to produce five moles of nitrogen gas and six moles of water. You might want to try balancing that equation on your own. It might take you a couple tries. So what are we asking, being asked to find out? Well, how many moles of nitrogen monoxide are needed to react with 2.28 moles of ammonia? So we want, to, we want to figure out the reactants side. We're just concerned with what's going on here with the ammonia and the nitrogen monoxide. So we know that we have 2.28 moles of ammonia. I'm just leaving out the word mole here, but I think you can figure out. And so we're going to set up our equivalency fraction here. Ammonia is going to have to go in the denominator. And we're asking about how many moles of nitrogen monoxide. What's our relationship between ammonia and the nitrogen monoxide? Well, we see we have four moles and six moles, taking it right off the balanced equation. This is why you need to balance the equations first because if you don't have the equation balanced properly, your mole ratio will be completely wrong. If you go through, and of course these are all really moles, I don't write those words in there, but assuming we're multiplying moles of, moles of, if you go ahead and do the math, you will discover that you need 3.42 moles of nitrogen monoxide to react with our 2.28 moles of ammonia in this particular reaction. In order, instead of a four to six, we're going to have 2.28 to 3.42. So again, you can set this up as a cross multiplication problem because you're really just creating two equivalent fractions. Then the second question with the same reaction asks how many moles of each product will be formed. And we just figured out that we, or we were told first of all, that we had 2.28 moles of the ammonia and we just calculated that we then would need 3.42 moles of the nitrogen monoxide. So how much nitrogen gas, how much water vapor are we going to produce? 
If you notice, we've got the same mole number between the nitrogen monoxide and the water, so that it is the same amount. Six, you know, is equal to six, or a six to six ratio equals one. So we can jump right in and say, well, we're going to make 3.42 moles of water because whatever the value of the nitrogen monoxide is, that's going to be the same value as the water since our mole values are equal. However, to calculate the amount of a nitrogen gas, we do need to set up the equation. So it, you could use the ammonia or you could use the nitrogen monoxide. We'll just use the ammonia for this time. So 2.28 moles of ammonia. And what are we going to multiply that by to determine how much nitrogen gas? Well, we need to figure out the mole ratio between the ammonia and the nitrogen. And here we're going from a reactant and a product. And so our reactant, we've got four moles. And then how much product does that make? Well, it makes five moles of the nitrogen. And so again, you would just go ahead and do the math. And you would end up discovering that the amount of um, nitrogen that is made is 2.85 moles of nitrogen gas. Again, you could set up this problem as a cross multiplication problem. Either way would work because the math ends up you having you do the same thing with the numbers depending upon whether you set them up as two proportional fractions or with this uh, mole ratio as a um, conversion equivalency fraction in the middle. So hopefully that helps you get a better understanding of how we use mole ratios. We will be doing a lot of calculations, stoichiometry calculations in this class. And so get this idea under your head. The key piece of information is you need to always start with a balanced equation. And I hope you can see why if you don't have the right coefficients in your equation to begin with, you are going to end up with the wrong calculations at the other end.